So uh, welcome back, everyone. Uh, here I, I am together with Matt Pippenberg. Um, and uh, we certainly have had a lot of things happening haven't we, in the last uh, week or so, uh, Matt. Um, and especially in, in the gold market, of course, it's all linked to fundamentals. And, and uh, you know, we have both talked about it and written about it. Um, mm. And so, so let's, you know, a lot of people are worried about the, uh, the drop we saw in gold um, Friday and Monday, uh, um, which was uh, yeah, quite dramatic. Uh, mm. So let, let's just start about start looking at the chart, Matt, uh, for um, that mm. particular drop because it, it's uh, it's happened before. It's nothing new, and and it doesn't change anything. Let's make that very very clear. Um, so let's have let's pull the chart up here so it makes it easier to comment on. So we had on on um, so if we look at this chart. Um, this is a, a, a weekly chart, actually. Um, no, well, let's start with sorry. Let's start with the, the daily chart um, and the daily uh, and short-term chart of, of the drop itself. So we, you had on um, uh, Friday, gold went from about eighteen hundred dollars to uh, seventeen sixty, mm -hmm. and then we wake up here in Europe Monday morning, and it's been down. Uh, from from 1760 to um, 1680, mm -hmm. that's just a massive drop, and you know this we've seen many times before. What happens is uh, clearly this is manipulation and uh, intervention at the highest degree. Mm -hmm. This is, was four billion dollars worth of paper gold dropped upon the market around mid one o'clock uh, European time in the morning, Monday morning when there is no market whatsoever, no buyers, there's a total hole, there's a, like a black hole. If you sell four billion into that, it's a black hole. Mm -hmm. No trader ever or no bank would, would sell that amount of gold um, if they wanted to get rid of gold uh, in an orderly way. Um, and any trader who did it would be fired on the spot. So mm -hmm. clearly this is someone who wants to drop a big amount of gold onto the market in order to push the price down. So that is manipulation. And we'll talk about later why they want to do that. And you have your views on that too, Matt. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but as we can see in the chart, you know, it, it's just, it was about a 15 minute period when, when uh, gold dropped from 1760 to, to uh, 1680. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's, as far as I see, that is just a pure technical thing. It's going to now, it recovered already overnight quite a lot, but now we are around the 1730, 1740 level. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's interesting if you look at the technical picture here, you know, I, I had a, looking at another chart, uh, there was a top in, um, in May of 1900. And then we had the first correction down, uh, down to uh, about $150 from, from 1900 to uh, 1750. Uh, and then they move up and then another move down now. So the, the, the move down we saw is also $150. This is a typical Elliott pattern, A, B, C down. A, B, C is a correction, A down, B up, C down. Um, and basically here, there's a C wave down that just uh, finished most probably on Monday. That is the same as the A wave, i.e. we have two equal waves of $150 stroke. That is a very typical technical, um, you know, the, the technical feature that we see. And on top of that, it actually dropped down to a long-term trend line, which I also show on, on, on the chart, that it was a, a, a resistance line until it then broke out of that, became a, uh, and now it became a support line and it dropped down to that support. So mm -hmm. there are many technical indicators here that are, are telling us that this was just a normal correction, although it was manipulated. We normally, Matt, never talk about technicals, of course, because we are driven by fundamentals uh, and that's what drives gold. But nevertheless, um, it's interesting sometimes for short term timing to, uh, timing to understand the market, to look at these technicals and, mm -hmm. and they confirm that this was just a normal move um, uh, in, in a, a long term up. Uh, uptrend and the uptrend is is confirmed by the final chart um, uh, i'm sorry to give you so many charts but i think it, it actually shows you uh, the picture very clearly this is the chart of the the cup and handle um you know, formation that we've had in, in gold since 2011 and, and this chart shows the the cup 
um, and, and at the right hand side, the top is the handle. And mm -hmm. these moves we're seeing now is basically uh, finishing the handle part. Mm -hmm. Just these little wiggles now, including the one on uh, Friday, Monday. That's just finishing the handle. Once the handle is finished, could take another you know, week or two. We don't know. Or it could have been finished uh, on Monday. Nevertheless, thereafter, gold is going to break out on the outside, upside, and you know the next target just out of the uh, cup and handle is, is three thousand uh, dollars. That's going to happen. We are in an uptrend, and there is absolutely no change to that. So, Matt, you know, so that is the technical view, which confirms our fundamental view. So, what is your take here on the on, on the fundamental side, uh, Matt? Yeah, thanks again. I mean, it's certainly important to, to remind ourselves of these technicals and put this into perspective. What's interesting is. It's not necessarily comical, but it's expected. The, the typical reaction Tuesday and Monday was, well, the, the, the dollar's getting stronger. We had good jobs reports. Rates might be going up. And so gold took a dive. We could spend hours breaking down each of those kind of uh, explanations and debunking them. We've written a lot about that. The idea of a jobs report sending gold down over $100 in a trading day at one in the morning in Europe just doesn't, doesn't float. Nevertheless, it is kind of ironic to attribute this to a possible rates rising or a rate hike when the fact is if rates do go up, it's only because inflation is going up. And inflation is going up is a very positive tailwind for gold. So even the explanations for the fall, the standard kind of pablum that passes for data in the mainstream financial media just, just doesn't float. In addition to your technical analysis, you know, without without risking again throwing the tinfoil hat, uh, the conspiracy theory, this is clearly a manipulation. We, we we write about this this week. It'll come out at the end of the week. A pretty strong explanation of how this manipulation took place and why it took place. And real simply, you know, Basel III was supposed to make a to tighten the belt in the derivative markets, which we know in the COMEX and the futures and forward markets has been tremendous decade long manipulation of the gold price by dumping gold on the paper market to push the mm -hmm. price down. And, and when I, what we wrote about this week is quite fascinating. Basel III was supposed to make that better or less uh, pernicious or nefarious. And, and Basel III's idea was that the commercial banks have to have more allocated good stuff for their balance sheet to match their unallocated bad stuff. The good stuff is physical gold and the bad stuff is paper gold. And that's what Basel III was hoping to clean up because they were getting pressure from China and elsewhere to make the, the derivatives market a safer space or to clean up the smut. But really ironically, what that means is, well, these banks now have to have more allocated physical gold on their balance sheets to match their unallocated paper gold to have you know net stable funding ratios. So. When you look under the curtains or under the hood of that and you look deep into the Fed or you look deep into the LBMA uh, banks or member banks, the simple fact is without, you know, this is fact, not fable, they don't have enough physical gold. They've leased it out, hypothecated it out, uh, levered it out, and, you know, they don't have the audits to prove that they have the physical gold. They, of course, know this. They need more gold. And my very cynical but realistic and historically confirmed take on this is that these bullion banks, knowing they need more gold on their balance sheets to meet the new regs, need to buy more gold. They need to have more gold. They don't have it. And what better thing to do than to put the price of gold on sale before you buy it? And the fact that they can manipulate with $4 billion in notional contracts, 24,000 contracts in two days, pushing the gold price down $100 is not just a simple mistake. It's a very deliberate move, in my, in my opinion. And again, we'll, we'll have a long article on this this week that just explains this in more detail, that effectively the big boys push the price down. Um, you know, 4 billion, 24,000 contracts, two days of trading overnight. It's not a mistake. It's just not. So they're buying low and hopefully going to be selling high. This, this notion of buying low and selling high, Egon, is something we've talked about in the gold market. It's true of all markets. But You've written many times and talked many times in the past over the years about gold as a good value today, whether it's at 1800 or 1677 or 2000 or 2200. And I, I think it'd go back to this point. Why, why explain more why you got gold at this price or at a price higher is still an incredibly good value when you compare it back to the 70s or even earlier in the 2000s. Hmm. Of course, as you say, the psychology of market is such that uh, the, the majority of investors uh, love buying high and, and, and then panic out at lows. Um, and that's just because you know, the, the news reaches the masses uh, already when the price is high. And that's what they're, why they're buying then, because they, they're not. Very few people buy 
um, uh, 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 an investment when it's unloved uh, and, and undervalued. I mean, that this is what we did in 2002 when gold was $300. I mean, that, that's the, the typical example of, mm. of buy, buying when nobody wants it, but it still has a, a real intrin intrinsic value. And, you know, we've seen that throughout history. Um, and and I, I love this chart, which uh, I'm showing here now, because I, and I showed it many times. But it really tells you where we are with this gold market. Gold today, based on this chart, uh, which is gold um, in relation to U.S. money supply, i.e. all the money created in the U.S., which is basically, as we know, since 71, um, and, and when Nixon took away the, the gold backing of the dollar, and, and we're now celebrating, if we're going to celebrate or, 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 or a morning uh, that particular uh, event. Um, so, yeah. And that's, of course, when the, the gold took off and money printing took off and the debt, debt um, massive um, debt creation took off. Um, and, and, of course, I experienced that time in the 70s when gold went from $35 uh, to 1980 when, when it reached eight, $850. So if we look at this chart now here, the chart shows gold at, at, in 1970 or 71, gold uh, was $35. Uh, and uh, as the chart shows, I mean, that's the low point. And then if you look at, at the next point, which is, I mean, I'm talking about the next low point now, which is in year 2000, gold, uh, went down to um, then 2000 to about just under $300, but it was down to 250 at the low. Uh, mm -hmm. But you know, gold is as cheap today, it well, was as cheap then um, in 2000 at $300 as it was um, in 1971 at, at $35. And so, so uh, that is due to all the money printing, of course, in relation to. to uh, mm -hmm to uh, money supply, gold was as cheap at 300 when we bought it um, as it was in 71. But now, look at now, 2021, we've seen massive money printing. Gold has gone sideways now for, for a while. And gold is again unloved and undervalued, just as it was in 2000, just as it was in 1971. So gold today at, at you know, under $1,800 is an absolute bargain. And as I just said you know, in my technical comment, you know, once we get out of this the pattern here that we're looking at, that if we want to call it you know, the resistance le level or cup and handle or, or whatever we want to call it, once we get out of that, uh, you know, the, the, our technical next target is $3,000. And that will not take long once it starts because in technical terms, again, that is... We're starting then a third wave in LU terms, and that will be a very fast way. way. Mm -hmm. so, so this is the time for people to think about now protecting their portfolio. Because you know, remember, we are not talking about speculation. We are not talking about people buying gold for the, for the sake um, of, of taking a quick profit. We're talking about people actually buying gold here uh, in order to protect their assets against what we see um, the biggest destruction of wealth that history has ever seen because of the debt situation um, and the money printing. So, uh, Matt, I mean, you've written a lot about this and, and, and we've talked about it. And, and you know, the, what's happening now is, of course, that governments are, because the more money they're printing, the more, the higher the risk that they lose control of markets totally. Yeah. Um, and therefore, they're actually you know, taking more control of markets totally. So, yeah, I mean, you, you've been thinking a lot about this. So let's hear your views. On that. Yeah, this is where I'm very comfortable talking big picture macros, which are just as important as the as the as the as the, as the, as the, as the short picture micros. But the the history or the correlation between excessive debt and then economic and social stress that leads to political and financial control is as old as is, is as old as history. I mean, there's nothing new under the sun, whether that's third century Rome, 18th century France, 20th century Germany, or 21st century Yugoslavia, or even, even today in the US and Europe in these developed economies, the, the, the pattern of going from debt to crazy and from crazy to control is, is really, again, nothing new under the sun. And I think, you know, when I look at this chart, which I'll pull up, which is just global debt, which is racing towards and going to be passing 280 trillion, that's a staggering, staggering piece of information. And, and it's really the premise upon which everything else can be understood. 
when you have massive debts like this, you know, and then you have the reaction of how to pay for that debt, it certainly isn't from GDP, so let's create money, whether that's the ECB, the Bank of Japan, or whether that's the Fed. The Fed's balance sheet in 2020, under the guise of a COVID pandemic, went from 3.5 trillion to 7.1 trillion in a year, which is more than QE1 through four operation twist of 209 to 230. 214 combined. Then you add on to that, you know, the massive M1 and M2 money supply expansion, which you can't ignore, although the Fed is not going to report that anymore the way they used to because it's so embarrassing. That's deliberate control by hiding information. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's an embarrassing fact. And then you tap onto that massive amounts of fiscal stimulus, again, in the guise of a COVID pandemic, which is highly debatable, but nevertheless justifies this massive fiscal and monetary expansion, which is in itself and by its very nature, highly inflationary. Of course, inflation itself is another form of control because the the, the policymakers will say it's transitory or non-existent when it's right in front of our noses. That's dishonesty and manipulation. Transitory inflation is a meme. And yet, of course, inflation gut punches the middle class and the real economy, creates a lot of tension, a lot of financial stress, and a lot of social unrest. And, you know, that is a, it's kind of an interesting to, to see why that social unrest is there, whether it's pitchforks in 18 or 1789 France or people storming the capital in, in, in 2021 America. The problem is people are frustrated because prices and, and inflation is rising. They're also seeing a, a massive wealth disparity. Uh, and that's not fiction or fable, it's fact, and it's the worst in history. And that creates social tensions, and they need, a, uh, they need an excuse for that. One other chart that's really worth looking at to see how an engineered, centrally controlled asset bubble is made is look at the Buffett indicator. You know, the Buffett indicator is the, is the ratio of corporate equities to GDP. It's at all-time highs at over 200%. This equity bubble is extraordinary. It's not natural. It's completely engineered and centralized control. And it's the direct beneficiary of years and years of massive amounts of liquidity and suppressed interest rates and debt rollovers. That has benefited a very small minority of the global population. And that creates resentment and unrest. And of course, the response from the central government of the world, the central banks of the world, is to tell you to worry more about COVID than the reality of the debt situation. Of course, COVID is real. We won't get into that debate. But it is an interesting and convenient paradigm to justify extreme policies. Now, what's also interesting in this, you know, I've talked to Russell Napier, we've written about it. There's other forms of centralized control just in the form of, you know, central bank uh, or government, excuse me, government guarantees of commercial bank loans that's backstopping the banks. Um, the other thing is even the former central bankers and current central bankers themselves, whether it's Stanley Fisher, or, or Inslee, uh, Larry Lindsay, or even current central bankers like Jerome Powell have all effectively admitted that the debt levels are unsustainable. What they're saying is, don't worry, that's going to be fixed by further growth. That also is a deliberate dishonesty, another form of centralized control by centralized misinformation. When debt to GDP passes the 100% Rubicon, mathematically, as David Hume and von Mises proves, you can't get growth. Growth goes down by 20, 30, 40% when you have debt to GDP at that ratio. So there's a deliberate attempt to hide math, hide facts, and hide motives here. And you know we're seeing more and more of that centralized control in, in fictions about inflation, fictions about growth, frankly, fictions about uh, government policy on our personal lives too which we won't get into because this is about markets and gold pricing, but there is a sense of desperation rather than accountability. But this cycle of debt to unrest, to political and economic instability, to control is again, nothing new under the sun. But Egon, you know, you've been through a lot of cycles. You've lived through them, you've traded through them, you've run companies through them, you've preserved your own wealth through them. I'm curious now, as we sit on the in the midpoint, past the midpoint of 2021, with all the mechanizations we've seen in the markets and with the central bankers and with Basel III and with money printing and with gold manipulation, you've you've always kind of been in favor of hyperinflation as the real as the real kind of skunk in this woodpile. Have your views changed in any way, or only can, gotten more confirmed in the last six to eight months? Uh -huh. I'm curious. No, well, no, they, they haven't changed. I mean, to me, it, it, it's very simple. You know, I, I was what, talking about gold. I was fortunate to be born, no, no, not to be born, but to, to, to actually start my working life just before gold uh, was decoupled from the do dollar, you know, a couple of years before 
I started my working life. So, so you know, I've been through this because before that, of course, gold was was stable since since uh, the thir- early thirties uh, uh, because it was fixed to the dollar, um, uh, and and so uh, that was then quite an exciting time to start uh, you know, looking at markets. But it's you know, remember, gold is just a consequence of the problems we see in the world, i.e., the destruction of paper money, and this is why. You know, I will never change my mind on gold um, because it, history tells us that it has to happen, that the, there is no currency ever in history that has survived in its original form. They've all been destroyed totally. And we are now seeing that 71 started the, the that was the, the, the beginning of the end of the dollar era. Um, and now we are, in my view, we're living through the, the end of the end. So and, and therefore, we are going to see uh, the, the money printing accelerating, as you've been saying, um, and therefore the currencies uh, continuing their debasement to zero. And gold obviously has to reflect that. that that's it's absolutely inevitable. Whatever they do to gold short term is yeah. going to happen. So therefore, it, it, I, I am more convinced than ever that gold will rise as a consequence of the total mismanagement of the world economy um, uh, and by central bankers and, and by governments uh, in desperation in order to su- survive, um, you know, basically to buy votes if you want. Uh, but they are going to fail uh, and we are going to see uh, at some point massive hyperinflation and, and sort of collapse of currencies and gold will be your best protection and silver will also be interesting to hold. Yeah. So that hasn't changed. Um, and, and I think just we want um, our listeners and, and our readers and our viewers to actually take note of that and think yeah. about that you have the chance now, at, as I showed in the chart before, at a very a low or uh, low uh, price Mm. to buy gold and and uh, buy the best insurance you can against what we see happening yeah yeah for sure for sure sadly what you're saying seems dramatic and sensational but the 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 numbers facts and cycles of time make it true and we just have to be realistic rather than dramatic in this period you know it just is what it is Yep. Okay, Matt. Well, we were a little bit longer today than normal, but I think these were very important points that we made. And yep. basically, it, it was both a, a, a summary of the, the fundamental reasons, which are the important ones, why you've got to protect yourself as, as an investor, uh, and two, why the technical short-term picture now confirms what we're seeing fundamentally. Uh, so the time is right, n- yep. right now uh, to buy gold is ac- absolutely critical. So thank you, Matt, and and thank you, everybody, for listening. And until next time. Okay, you guys. Take care.